Free Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's Fight Against Cancer. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of women's college soccer. We are coming to you live from Avaya Stadium in San Jose, California. This is the 2019 Women's College Cup. First up, everybody's underdog, the Washington State Cougars, taking on the number one seeded North Carolina Tar Heels. North Carolina ACC champs for the 22nd time getting to the NCAA tournament this season. Washington State finishing sixth in the Pac-12, making their first College Cup appearance. Coming up in our second semifinal tonight, an all-Pac-12 affair between Stanford and UCLA. And speaking of Stanford, I just happen to have a former Cardinal alum and U.S. national team captain beside me. This is, of course, Julie Foudy. I'm Jen Hildreth. And I have to say, with these two teams, Julie, when we talked to all the teams here this week, there was one word that kept coming up with these two, and that was hunt. They both love to hunt. This, these two teams, they're aggressive. We've seen North Carolina do it for so many years, but the great unknown in this underdog is Washington State. And they keep talking about how they love to be the underdog. They love to hunt. They're feisty, they're gritty. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that all tournament long as this underdog that really has gone on to prove so many people wrong. Well, the only tournament game they had at home was round one against Memphis. Then, Julie, they hit the road becoming the first team ever to win three games away from home in the NCAA tournament. Oh, by the way, that included taking down number one seeded Virginia in Charlottesville. They stayed in Charlottesville to then beat West Virginia three to nothing. Morgan Weaver with a brace to lead the Cougs in that one. The road trip then continued to Columbia, South Carolina, where it was death by set piece against the second seeded Gamecocks, Micaiah Mines. The game winner in the 96th minute. And now here comes another number one seed in that illustrious history for Anson Dorrance and the Tar Heels. One that, quite frankly, will never be matched. And they have a trio of All-Americans leading the way here. And a nice trio to have indeed. Alessio Russo, English youth national team player, who actually missed the postseason last year entirely with a broken leg. And so how they've loved having her back scoring goals and in midfield, Brianna Pinto, number eight. This is a player who's so much fun to watch. She runs the show from the middle, but she can also put the goal, put the ball in the back of the net. And a player for sure that's going to have a future, I think, with the U.S. team. And talk about a future with the U.S. team. This freshman All-American, Macy Bell, she is a defender for this Tar Heel. As a freshman, has started every single game. Will the historic season continue for the Cougs? And will North Carolina make their way back to the title game? Find out next. The North Carolina Tar Heels getting ready to go against the Washington State Cougars. And this is a Tar Heel team that's going to have to go without Emily Fox as the junior midfielder and Herman Trophy finalist was injured in that quarterfinal win against USC. Such a loss for North Carolina. And this is how they're going to line up without Fox. Gone to a 3-5-2. Senior Morgan Goff goes into that holding midfield position. Jones moves out to the left. Andrew Jeske to the right. And they will try and play this one, as they said, over and over for Emily Fox. For Washington State, a team that typically under Todd Schulenberger has been a 4-4-2. Well, in this NCAA tournament, they're a 4-3-3. And Morgan Weaver is a player to watch for. Leads that line. Such great pace. 14 goals on the season for her. <laughs> Both of these teams are going to come after each other. And off we go. Kicking off the 2019 Women's College Cup from Avaya Stadium in San Jose. North Carolina Tar Heels in white. Champions out of the ACC. The Washington State Cougars. The surprise team in this field of four this year in red. An early whistle from our crew, Samantha Martinez, our center referee in this matchup. There is Todd Schulenberger in his fifth season. Set programs records in 2017 with wins. They made it to the NCAA third round. Well, guess what? Those numbers all bettered this year in this historic season that the Cougs 
would love to see continue to Sunday's championship game. And to Dorrance saw his Tar Heels get to the national championship game. It was an all ACC affair last year. Carry North Carolina, North Carolina coming up short against Florida State. Since then, they have called it a redemption year. That ball blocked as there is some of that pressure. The hunt that you'll see, this one particular for Morgan Weaver and the Cougars. Giving no time and space to Macy Bell. Perfect glimpse of what that front three for Washington State wants to do. They want to press the back three of North Carolina. And they said, listen, if North Carolina is going to stay in that 3-5-2, meaning three in the back, against our three forwards, we are going to make it difficult for them. And so often, that is the storyline for what North Carolina will do as they turn around here. That's the freshman Isabel Cox trying to set up Alessia Russo. Bridget Andrzejewski, one of the seniors on this Tar Heel squad. Ball across in the area. It is headed out initially, but it bounces back to the Tar Heels. The shot is high from Andrzejewski. And here's an area Washington State has to be careful of. When they clear and they don't clear well, you see UNC so good at picking up those second balls. Andrew Jeske got all of that one, just missed. But over and over again, one of the trademarks of North Carolina Tar Heels is they love to hunt in that box as well, offensively. Ella Diedrich, a super senior, if you will, in goal for Washington State. All Pac-12, third team selection this year. Number one all time in program history in wins. Imagine she will be called upon at some point as here comes Russo. Her shot is wide, but well within her range. Julie, let's get a few Saudi free kicks into this game, shall we? Some keys for you let's, for Washington let's State. Let's do that. For Washington State, their front four, when I say front four, that means their three forwards and their attacking central midfielder, Maka Gomera Stevens. Want, they want to run those four at the U, at UNC offensively and defensively. We've talked about it a lot. They want to be super aggressive in attacking that three back. Ball cleared forward. It is in the vicinity of Weaver. Still going after it. Claudia Dickey pulled into action early. There's Gamera Stevens. Ball at her feet. Ran Alger, sends the ball in. Dickey again had to get in a collision with Elise Bennett. And you best believe the Cougs are coming at you. And this is the matchup that Washington State wants to see, the Wubin Moy morgan weaver matchup. Weaver putting pressure on. And then the second chance here as well with Bennett. But this is a great start for Washington State. They talked about not having the nerves. They feel like they belong here. And they just earned themselves a corner kick. And in these first five minutes, they're playing like it as well. First team ever to go on the road, get three wins away from home in the NCAA tournament and make it to the Women's College Cup. They have certainly earned their way here. Feel like they belong, as you said, Julia. Now we'll see what they do with this first set piece. Driven ball into the box. Go out of bounds. Couple of keys for you, Julie, for North Carolina today. Well, we're already seeing they're having to struggle right now with that first one, dealing with the pressure that Washington State's going to put on their back three. That's going to continue uh, that pressure, and they're going to have to figure that out. And then also, because they're in that 3 5 2, and the way their system, North Carolina, sets up against Washington State, that outside midfield space is where they want to break the pressure. So finding those outside flank midfielders is going to be key for North Carolina. 
and that is typically a space that would be filled by the first team All-American, Emily Fox, who, as we mentioned, not able to play today. There's Weaver going after it again, boys. She is just forcing Ruben Moy into decisions early. That ball made its way back to Claudia Dickey, the sophomore goalkeeper out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Big long distribution goes all the way to Diedrich on the other end. Anton Doran saying Dickey could potentially be one of the best distributing the ball ever at North Carolina. Ball flicked forward to that front line. It is touched off of Darcy, the shot, and Weaver has the goal! Right away, Washington State in the front. And Weaver active. If she gets even a half step, you know she's going to fire it away. Great in tracking down that second ball and just creating chaos for that back three. And it's something we mentioned yesterday. Are you going to stay in a back three against this Washington State front three? North Carolina said, yes, we are. We'll see how they deal with this, but right now that matchup with Weaver and Ruben Moy is one to watch because Weaver right now is winning that one. Has her 15th goal of the season to show for it. You could feel that one coming, the way that Washington State came out on fire. And you could feel the different energy of this team when you talked to them yesterday. Uh, an excitement, and, and it's not that UNC's not excited, but there's an expectation with UNC. There's a pressure with UNC. When you're holding 22 national titles, you better get to that College Cup. With Washington State, there was a joy to it that was fun to see because they're not expected to be here. They have nothing to lose. That's what they talked about the entire meeting. And they felt like they've seen it all this year, playing so many great teams in the Pac-12. Three Pac-12 teams here at the College Cup exemplifying what a tremendous year that conference has had with the Pac-12 and the ACC leading all other conferences with nine teams apiece in the NCAA tournament this year. But here's what you know about North Carolina. So much talent, so much depth, and so much fight. This team is not near being done. I mean, this is, this is going to be a great game because you know North Carolina is going to come and they're gonna bring it. North Carolina went down to Southern Cal in the quarterfinal, came back in that one, wound up getting a 3-2 victory over the Trojans. Now they find themselves down a goal again after that seventh minute shot from Weaver. First shot of the match on goal for Washington State, winding up in the back of the goal. To your point, Jen, about North Carolina going down a goal against USC in that quarterfinal. I mean, such a good test, though, for a team because now they've lived it. They know they can come back from it. USC also a very good team. Opportunity from just inside midfield here for Lana Rubin Moy. Beautiful delivery from the junior out of London, England. They set up her teammates quite often on set pieces this season. Here's Rachel Jones, shifted her positioning on the field with Fox out of the lineup. Taylor Otto, captains for this North Carolina team, back to Jones. Her left footed ball across looking for Andrew Jeske. And it'll be a foul against Andrew Jeske. Or offside, excuse me. Far side assistant referee waving the flag. Six goals, eight assists on the season for Andrew Jeske. And I love that when we talked to North Carolina yesterday, we were asking if they had any themes or mottos for the season, and we had a big group of them in there, and they all kind of said, oh, no, not really. And it was the senior, Andrew Jess, who spoke up and said, well, 
redemption year, redemption season. <laughs> I've been to the College Cup now. This is my third time. Right. I want to come out of there with a trophy. Jones had it tapped away. Here's Elise Bennett. Foul against the Cougars. I think they mind terribly picking up a few fouls, especially this end of the field. Got her a bit on that follow through. No, they and they they said yesterday they consider winning is a form of the most fouls Washington State. Said those two numbers often went hand in hand. If they had more fouls, they often had more goals. Certainly, though, a concern with as good as Ruby Moyes in particular on set pieces for North Carolina. Be careful where you commit those fouls against the Tar Heels. Something to be wary of if you're Washington State. Julia Dorsey coming up to take the throw in for North Carolina. A lacrosse player who has made her way to stay in the starting lineup for North Carolina this season in that back three. Both Dorsey and Claudia Dickey, the goalkeeper, two sport athletes for the Tar Heels, as Dickey is a member of the basketball team. Jones. Sends it toward Cox, who is well covered. It's pretty remarkable when you think about that. Going straight from soccer season to basketball. Two sport athletes. It's hard enough at the Division I collegiate level playing one sport. Anson was effusive about both of their play and how much for Dorsey, number seven, on the ball right now, throwing it in. How much lacrosse defending actually helped her and her soccer defending. There is Brianna Pinto. Haven't called her name too much. She's the one who, as you said, Julie, pulls the strings in the midfield. This time, that ball right to the feet of the Cougars as they look forward. Weaver on it again. Weaver, what a move to get free. Her shot, not on target. The women's Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona coming your way Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Speaking of basketball, Notre Dame taking on fourth ranked UConn at Gamble Pavilion in Storrs, Connecticut. Those two teams always fun when they get together. Notre Dame in a rebuilding year to be sure as they lost all five starters from the team who went to the national championship game a year ago. UConn unbeaten ranked fourth in the country. When you think about, even though Washington State said there's there's not a lot of nerves, of course we have tremendous respect for North Carolina, but we feel like we've done it and seen it all with the Pac-12 group. But the importance of that early goal, just in settling, regardless of whether you say that or not, it's your first collegiate semifinal game. Now those early goals often have a way of easing the nerves, making you feel even more confident. That was a word that Todd Schulenberger used with his team, that they do come in here confident. And with what they have done to get here to their first College Cup, you can understand why. I mean, when you go into Virginia, a team that for much of the season was ranked number one in the country, you beat the Cavaliers on their own field. Then you go to South Carolina, the SEC champs. You beat them, they're a number two seed, on their home field. West Virginia, an excellent team, beat them 3-0. Memphis, also a conference champion. I mean, Washington State's run here has really been impressive. No team before has ever gone through what they've gone through, taken down the seeded teams that they have to get this far. Akila McLinn, the 5'8 junior defender the right back position for Washington State. Sydney Culver. 
wants to get that ball to the front line. Weaver and Ruben Moy near each other again. Gamera Stevens, three Tar Heels around her. She still has the ball at her feet. It is blocked out for another corner kick. How smooth is she on the ball? We haven't, that's another name we haven't said much, Gamera Stevens, but when you talk to the coaching staff at Washington State, they will tell you she has been the best for them in this NCAA tournament. So much is talked about with Morgan Weaver and her goals and how good she indeed has been. But this is the player they talk about who's so underrated and under the radar. And they said, maybe no longer. <laughs> She's been discovered. Alger from the corner for the Cougars. One in the air by North Carolina. The follow up from Mines. Just a bit high. Remember, she had that game winner in overtime at South Carolina off the corner kick. Maness getting confident with the goals now. She gets the game winner against South Carolina. Now she says to Todd Schulenberger, why not, can I come up? And, and that's a good look. I mean, that's a great story from that South Carolina quarterfinal match. She wasn't, she never got forward for corner kicks and she asked Schulenberger, Coach Schulenberger, in the last minute, hey, can I go up? So she comes up late, they don't pick her up, and she scores the game winner. I think she earned the right, as you said, to keep making that trek forward. And the other interesting part about that corner kick was it was taken by number 21, Hannah Goff. Usually it's Brianna Alger, who we've seen, just took that corner for Washington State. She's usually the one to come up and take it, but that time, Coach Schulenberger wanted a different look. Had Goff come up and take it. Wound up with that golden goal. First of the season, by the way, for Mines, so no time like the present. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup Final at Sunday, December 8th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Kamara Stevens on the ball. Weaver couldn't quite keep it in, Leah Tarville throw. What a significant lead in the title run there for North Carolina. It's just remarkable when you look at that. 22 national titles and the next best is Notre Dame at three. I mean, it's remarkable the run that Anson has had with this group and the amount of players in the history. I mean, it's just so amazing to see what he's done for this program and what he's done for women's soccer. Over four decades for Hanson Dorrance as head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. And you know what's so neat too is when you talk to any Tar Heel, they're so tied into that family. They're close, they all hang out. There's, and, and that's, as any coach know, that's, knows, that's so hard to do to create that culture. And Anson has done such a good job doing that alongside Bill Palladino for so many years. I mean, those two created this dynasty. Last NCAA championship coming in 2012 for North Carolina. So by their standards, the title drought, Chapel Hill. Yeah, the longest drought before that had only been two seasons. You look at it over the last decade, only two titles compared to 20 before that. Dorsey. That's it toward Jones. This is the third College Cup appearance in the last four years for this North Carolina team. So especially here in the last four years, they have continued to get back to the biggest stage. I don't able to come away with the trophy. Kamara <laughs> Stevens held on the ball long enough to keep possession, draw the foul. Free 
kick for Washington State. Bridget Regan, freshman for the Cougars, delivers it into the hands of Claudia Dickey. We're now joined by UCLA head coach Amanda Cromwell. Her team getting set for our second semifinal tonight against a familiar foe in Stanford. Amanda, congratulations on Thank your you. great season. And just maybe give us your thoughts on that matchup coming up later tonight. It's going to be a great matchup. Two teams that know each other very well. Uh, played a lot growing up together, youth national teams. So uh, familiar foes, and um, hopefully we'll uh, see some excellent soccer. Well, we certainly have come to expect that when the two of you get together. The 2017 NCAA Championship saw you two battle it out. 3-2 the win there for Stanford. Your team, your players told us yesterday they're kind of tired of almost. What about this team gives you confidence coming into this matchup? Well, we have an excellent senior class have led the way and um, just been great leaders and we've gotten a lot better this season. You can see individual players are peaking at the right time and our team is peaking. So I think uh, we're on a mission. Hey, Amanda, what do you see in this game? I don't know if you've been able to watch much of it, but the Pac-12 out in the front in the lead. Yes, I have. I, I was here for the kickoff. It, um, right away, Washington State was pushing three high and going direct and looking to win second balls, and it paid off for them. I think uh, UNC players slipped, and um, so we're watching that really closely. There, there seems to be uh, maybe an issue. Maybe wearing, wearing studs might be the call tonight. Well, I know you are quite familiar with what Washington State can do. Three Pac-12 teams here, including your Bruins. Good luck later tonight. Thank you. You can catch that match. UCLA and Stanford, 9.30 Eastern time right here on ESPNU. And with all the rain they've been getting and forecasted as well, I mean, this field's only going to get softer to Amanda's point. Seen a few slips and slides. Right there where you go. Jones cannot get around McLean. You know where she's going with the ball. Anson Doran said it yesterday in the press conference. When this Washington State team gets the ball, they are going to goal. Damara Stevens held up just enough. That is. Morgan Goff starts her 13th match of the season, but had been coming off the bench. Thrust into that starting lineup with the injury to Emily Fox, who is North Carolina team says they are certainly playing for in this college cup. Offside against the Cougars, as our assistant referee will say Bennett came from an offside position. has not been able to have much time on the ball. That is Otto looking for Russo in the box. The bounce toward Russo. The shot and the goal. North Carolina has tied it up. And this is the beauty of Alessia Russo being back in. As I was saying in the open, they missed her out last postseason with a broken leg. Washington State, that bobbling second ball, they can't clear, they can't clear, and UNC time and time again will punish you for it. And especially when you have a forward like Russo who loves to hunt these down. Washington State, two, three separate chances to clear that. They don't get it out, and UNC punishes for punishes them for that. Fourth goal of this NCAA tournament for Russo, named a first-team All-American again for the second straight season this year. That's goal number 13 on the season for her, and she has really started to turn it on. Loved when North Carolina switched into that 3-5-2 early in their ACC season. We're really about halfway through when they switched to that formation. That's her seventh goal in the last seven games. The response now from Washington State, back up to Bennett. Dorsey, 
Here's it out, but it will be the third corner kick coming for Washington State. Yeah, they switched to that 3-5-2 specifically to give Russo more space, more time on the ball, more opportunities just like that one. They felt that she was much better utilized with the two of them up front and Cox running alongside her. Russo was named the ACC Tournament MVP, had the game winner in the ACC Championship game in overtime against the Virginia Cavaliers. So she's not quite all the way back, but playing very well right now for North Carolina. Alger's ball bending toward Dickey. What a grab by the goalkeeper. <laughs> and Jen, as you know well, those are not easy when they're floated like that up there to come down with it and she in the middle of all of that Dickey able to not only rise above but actually hold on to it well done by Claudia Dickey and it even went off Bennett's head a little bit and still Dickey held on to it some good strength in the hands and good vision by the goalkeeper North Carolina used two goalkeepers most of the season with the freshman Mars Josephson really splitting time with Dickey much of the way, but it has been Claudia Dickey as the starter. And she's played the majority of minutes in the postseason. Well, you gotta help your goalkeeper out now. You can't tie your shoes with those big clunky gloves on. <laughs> Kinda like my kids. <laughs> they don't have that excuse though. <laughs> Speaking of shoes, we have a great Effort to tell you about now through the December 12th, you can bid on shoes from Alex Morgan, Carly Lloyd, many other athletes, coaches, and celebrities. You can bid at ebay.com slash vweek. All proceeds benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. It's very cool, all the different items that go up on that. And money raised for cancer research. First substitution of the match coming on now. Rue Muchurera coming in there once again. In case you want to bid on some of those celebrity worn shoes, ebay.com slash vweek. Both teams making a change. There is Muchurera has had the best year of her career this season in a retro senior year for North Carolina. Five goals, six assists. And Mackenzie Frimpong Ellardson coming on for Washington State in that front line replacing Bennett. Sliding effort that time from the captain, Diedrich. And there is a very familiar name as part of that last name, Frimpong Ellardson. So great to see Mac out there. Tina Frimpong, former U.S. Women's National Team player, 2007. World Cup player, played professionally. And Mack there alongside her for so much of it. I was talking to Mackenzie Frimpong yesterday. There's Tina in the stands. Staying warm. Rocking her Washington State cap. She played at University of Washington. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go over. Support your kids, You got to right? support your kids. Yeah. I was talking to Mackenzie yesterday about growing up watching her mom play and if her mom wanted her to go to Washington instead. She goes, oh, no, then, you know, if she sent me to Washington State on an unofficial visit thinking it would dissuade me from ever going there. And I got home and said, I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, mom. Yeah, backfired on you, Tina. She said it was so cool. I got to hang with all these national team players growing up, go to see Harry Potter m movies with Kristen Press, <laughs> hang out with Abby, Hope. Not bad. And then she scored that game winner against Virginia. Big moment there. To knock off the number one seed. There she is. Mac and Tina at the game. That's when Frimpong was rocking the U.S. jersey. What a fun journey for those two. And now it continues. Gamera Stevens stays with it. Weaver. Andrzejewski Pinto. Crunching tackle to take it away. Go, go. 
now all the way back to Diedrich. The letter back line, play it forward. McLean can't get around. Nutrera, who was looking for the trip, no whistle though. Just enough pressure that time from Frimpong Ellerton to disrupt what Ruben Moy wanted to do with that ball. She gets back though. Another youth national team member for England on this North Carolina roster. Ruben Moy along with Russo. Weaver always seems to be around the ball. Anytime it gets into that attacking third. <laughs> and what what happens too is her being so active on that front line pulls players like Andrew Jeske, number four, all the way back. That's your outside midfielder. And you know in that 3 5 2 formation as an outside midfielder, you're going to have to do a lot of running. But now you're having to do a lot of defensive running, coming all the way back to your back line. And so you're seeing what was a three back for North Carolina turn into a four, sometimes five back with those outside midfielders having to track. And that's the chess match, right? You want to play. You want those outside flank players exhausted so they're not running at you offensively. Throw in, still not quite clear. Rican. Back forward toward Avery Collins. Grad transfer from Stanford, part of this Washington State front line this season. And you mentioned all that work, all that running done by players like Andrew Jeske. Well, under Anson Dorrance, this is nothing new. He is not afraid to sub and sub in bunches. Five new players coming on, and they're not subs, Julie. They they're not. They're not reserves changers. anymore. Yes, they've changed that. Starters and game changers. No longer starters and reserves. And boy, was the team effusive about that group coming on right now being, in fact, game changers, literally, and how much they've relied on them this year. Perhaps it was because they changed their name. Well, maybe so. That helps. Damara Stevens eludes a couple of Tar Heels looking for the foul. She's going to get it. And from a dangerous spot on the field, Mucherera committing the infraction. And this is what Mucherera is known for. She comes in with a lot of feistiness. I'm not sure why she's shrugging at the referee about that one. Pretty clear. <laughs> Shocked her good. But that's not a place you want to be giving up a set piece to Washington State. Because on the other side of that is a player we haven't talked a lot about. Number 16, Avery Collins. Played for Stanford in the 2017 College Cup, won a national title with Stanford. She's a grad transfer, and she is great on the end of these. Kamara Stevens plays it short toward Weaver. They don't get a shot on goal. They do get a corner. Claudia Dickey frustrated, smacking her hands in frustration after that play happened. You remember how she came out with authority, grabbed the ball out of the air, the last corner kick attempt from Washington State. This will be their fourth coming. Alger will come set it up. Her left footed ball. Back in the gloves of Dickey, who is making it very clear, Julie, that that area is her area. Any ball that's in that vicinity, she is sending a message. She's also making it very clear she plays basketball and has good hands. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, and these again, when they come floating as they are, uh, it's hard to grab them. It's hard to head them, but it's especially hard and it's wet outside, it's slick. 
done a great job in both of those crowded situations of holding him and keeping him. Yeah, you wouldn't know it by the way she has handled them, that's for sure. This is one of the new players who just came on for North Carolina. Attack quickly snuffed out though. Madison Schultz, Alexis Strickland, Zoe Rade, Ali Gambone. And Maggie Pierce, the changes for the Tar Heels, along with Mucherera, who came in prior to that group of substitutions. I feel like this first half has flown by. Weaver and the Cougars striking in the seventh minute. Russo and North Carolina tying it in the 24th. Both teams trying to fight for that right to get into the NCAA championship game on Sunday. Dorsey forward to Rade, cleared out for a Tar Heel throw. Nutrera can get a lot of air under these throw-ins. against North Carolina. Mucherera actually had an assist. Final game of the regular season for North Carolina against Miami had an assist off a of throw in. Has one goal in this NCAA tournament coming in with North Carolina's first round win over Belmont. Well, you know the way that these two teams played. It, it had the potential to get a little choppy at times. Yeah, and, the, and the challenge for Washington State as they leave most of their team out there. Here's Mucherera again. Another foul. But the challenge for Washington State as they leave most of their players in is you, you get in the second half a fresher North Carolina team. It's what everyone has to face against this North Carolina group with the depth they have. And so often what North Carolina does is wear down opponents. Is that pressure, that hunt that they talk about, that both of these teams talk about? Well, North Carolina is better equipped to bring that for a full 90 minutes because of those substitutions, those game changers coming off the bench with fresh legs. And it becomes a compounded challenge for Washington State in that second half when that's going to be the source of your offense is the hunt of chasing down balls defensively. And when you don't have the legs to do that and put the pressure on those back three, that changes the game entirely. Mucherera's ball across and in! Alexis Strickland! The freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina, putting the Tar Heels in front. Heard so much about how much Mucherera had grown this season in her productivity from the flank. And there, that is a beauty of a ball to Strickland on that back post for her fourth goal of the year as a freshman and what a timely one but give credit to Rue Mucherera for making that happen on the far side and can the reserves of Washington State keep that same level as those players off the bench two of whom just connected for that goal for North Carolina and there have been several changes for Washington State Shana Wilden, number 22, is in for Gamera Stevens in the midfield. Aleli Hernandez Repriza, Molly Myers, and we mentioned from Hong Ellerton earlier, all in off the bench. Mucherera had it taken off of her foot by McLean. Yeah. 
from Hawk Ellerton. Plays it forward. Claudia Dickey not afraid to come out and use her feet. Could not use her hands outside of the area as she was. Ball over the head of Schultz. Washington State came into this match like they were fired out of a cannon, but the momentum swinging a bit here toward North Carolina. And Mucharera, look at this back post run by Strickland as well. Behind her defender at first, gets on the opposite side of it. But what a bowl that is. Literally a game changer. And Mucharera, who came off the bench, Assisted on that goal. Now we'll go back to the bench as Allie Clanky, another freshman for the Tar Heels, replaces her. You saw who was congratulating her on that sideline, Heather O'Reilly, former U.S. Women's National Team player. Just retired from professional play as well after winning a national title with Carolina Courage. Yeah, might as well just tack on another championship. She's a volunteer assistant for this Tar Heel squad. They love getting her in there. Who wouldn't? A gift, really. What an incredible career. How much fun to watch Heather O'Reilly for all those years, whether it be in a Tar Heel uniform or U.S. national team or North Carolina Courage. And she finished out her NWSL career. Another change coming for Washington State here as there is Heather O'Reilly. Three-time Olympic gold medalist, World Cup champion. Also won a couple of NCAA championships. 2003 and 2006 for North Carolina, <laughs> where by the way, not only did she win, but she was the offensive MVP of both of those college cups. Wow. I said, Heather, when are you getting in? I was talking to her a couple days before we came in. She was like, get on Friday on the the flight with all the the players who are injured and some staff members. She said, I'm in charge of getting in the bus. <laughs> she goes, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> well, hopefully they got here with no problems. <laughs> it's good to see they arrived. I was Grayson. a little worried, I won't lie. <laughs> this is freshman Grayson Lynch. Nice move. Just came into the match. Lynch still has it in the box for Washington State. North Carolina just cannot clear it. Good pressure. How about that for trying to single-handedly take that one on? Lynch with this wet field. It's slick. Just trying to make something happen on the dribble. Freshman out of Castle Rock, Colorado. Played on the same club team as Micaiah Vines before coming to Washington State. Schultz, quick ball forward, but maybe a bit too quick for the Tar Heels. Macy Bell tracked that ball down for North Carolina. Earning third team All-American status this season, Macy Bell, and being named the ACC Freshman of the Year. That speaks a lot when you see a freshman defender get that award. And you had another freshman, Dan Ordonia is at Virginia, who led the conference in scoring this season. She didn't win Freshman of the Year, Bell did. That should tell you a lot right there about how teams she, respect her she work. She is a fun one to watch, too. That's so smooth. Great on the ball. Great defensively. Good pace. Good angles. Reads the game well. I mean, right away you see what Anson saw immediately in Macy Bell. He told us a great story yesterday. He said in his 41 years, 
Never had a freshman start in the first preseason scrimmage of the season. He always put the starters from the spring in there, so that wasn't going to include a freshman. Only one freshman has ever earned that. Not Mia Hamm, not Christine Lilly. <laughs> not April Heinrichs. No. Go down the list. Not Cindy Parlow. This young lady right here. Coming up at halftime, we will preview our second semifinal coming your way from San Jose later tonight between UCLA and Stanford. We'll show you how our ESPN soccer team supports V Week and we'll have Julie's first half highlights and analysis. Boy, really, it, it is slippery out there. I heard Amanda Cromo, UCLA coach, say spikes are going to be important. Got to keep your footing on this field. Zoe Rade, a player who's seen some time with the youth U.S. national teams in her career. Started to punch a few more goals in toward the end of the season. Scored in the last two regular season games and has a goal and an assist in the NCAA tournament. Slipping and sliding continues. And Maggie Pierce in some pain as she gets back to her feet. waste no time getting the ball down the field now the final seconds ticking off what a fun first half this has been we said these two teams were gonna come out here hunt go after each other i think we've seen that and for the the challenge for washington state is how do you bring that energy in this second half knowing that you're playing against a team like North Carolina that loves to bring all of it. So they've got to figure out that front three and how they can get that game back because right now UNC with the momentum for sure going into the second half. Well, let's ask that question to Washington State head coach Todd Schulenberger. He joins us now. Coach, what a tremendous start for your team. You take the early lead. You now trail by a goal. What's going to be key for your team in the second half? Yeah, we got to do a better job in the second part of his second half of the first, you know what I'm saying, because he plays the, the first group and the second group comes in, and we battle with the first group. The second group, we let ourselves down a little bit. The typical Carolina goal in the back post, we left the player free, and then the first goal was just we were too flat and let the ball over the top. Any changes for the second half, Coach, and the no, way you I mean, play? We got, they don't have a corner kick yet. We've had our corner kicked him. We did a lot here. I'm happy but disappointed in the score. Coach, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Washington State trailing North Carolina by a goal after our first half. We will preview the second semifinal of the night, UCLA and Stanford, when we come back. Welcome back to San Jose. The North Carolina Tar Heels leading Washington State by one after the first half. Anson Dorrance. Now joining us, head coach of the Tar Heels, Anson, you saw your team go down a goal early, but what did you see from this team and the way they fought back and took the lead? Well, you know, it's not like they had some sort of extraordinary tactical plan to get back. I mean, what they did is they, you know, we sort of, you know, pushed the ball into the penalty box and uh, Alessia Russo, as she does so well, jumped on it and uh, put us back in it. And then I thought our, uh, our next goal was actually Extraordinary. I think uh, Rue's ability to beat people down the left flank uh, is a matter of her personal history. And then that header uh, back post was absolutely wonderful. So I'm glad we're in it. Uh, I don't want to pretend like, you know, we deserve to be in this position because I think uh, Washington State has played a very, very uh, 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 good game against us. It's very difficult to play against them the way they're playing. Uh, and they're a tough team to play against. But I'm ecstatic to be up 2-1 uh, right now. Hanson, thank you for your time. It was quite a battle in that first half, and you can see the tremendous amount of respect that Anza Dorrance and the Tar Heels have for this Washington State team. And no, it is not going to be easy this next 45. That was Rue Mucherera on the sideline there that Anson was talking about on that great ball into Strickland. A 
remember that in the first half, it was the Cougars who came out flying, got the goal from their leading scorer, Morgan Weaver, in the seventh minute. They're in touch, but the Cougars fortunate that Izzy Cox just had already turned her head, was going the other direction. Didn't pounce on it. Ruben Moy up toward Russo. Got the game tying goal for North Carolina in the 24th minute. Russo, the 2018 ACC Offensive Player of the Year, missed the postseason last year, though, for breaking her leg in the regular season finale. This year, coming on very strong in the postseason. Brianna Pinto, one of the players we highlighted, leading scorer coming into this game for North Carolina. She and Russo, the top two in scoring for the Tar Heels. Alessia Russo, member of England's U-20 national team. And a player who will tell you she does not quite feel she's really back, quote unquote, to where she was prior to that injury. But yeah, she said she it's said. taken. It's taken a long time, and I think part of that is you know you physically are back, but it's so hard for major injuries like that to be mentally back as well. First corner kick of the match coming right here for North Carolina. Ruben Moy will try her luck, sending it in the box. It is headed by Bell. Macy Bell had the game winner on a header in the quarterfinal to get the Tar Heels here against USC. Washington State having a little more difficulty imposing their will offensively. They do get the throw here. Lee Bennett, five goals, five assists on the season. Ball flicked by Collins. It takes a dangerous bounce. Dickey was coming out to get it all the way. Not sure her defenders knew that, though. One of the challenges of this 3-5-2 system that North Carolina is playing is it puts a lot of stress on those outside midfielders and I'll tell you in particular on this right side Andrew Jeske she has put in a shift already tonight number four for North Carolina often dropping deep to become that fourth back on the last line and then trying to get forward offensively as well this is Dorsey, the left back, getting up into the attack now for North Carolina. There's Andrew Jeske, the senior of Lutherville, Maryland. One of the mottos for this North Carolina team year after year, a little acronym they like, FTS, for the seniors. I want to try to get that <laughs> trophy before they leave town. I think it was Bridget Andrew Jeske, a senior, he said, I really like that motto this year. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to make sure that wasn't going anywhere, that that tradition would continue. They also talked about how close this team feels, and it, it comes as no surprise that all four teams who make it to this stage and on to the semifinals have great team chemistry. There's an energy to them that is infectious, but this Carolina team, Bridget Andrzejewski said, we, and I said, how did you get there? And she said, we, we worked on it. We spent a lot of time. Collins, transfer from Stanford. Graduate transfer joining the Cougars this season. Didn't they tell us they had some sort of candlelight dinner, yes. I think, at Andrew Jeske's <laughs> apartment? He's just going to get to that. Bell kept the ball, got it over to Cox. Good patience here by the Tar Heels in this attack. Cox from the end line at the near post. It is smothered by Diedrich. 
Jalen Hurts and sixth ranked Oklahoma look to keep their playoff hopes alive when they take on number seven Baylor tomorrow in the 18th annual Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. That's noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on ABC and the ESPN app. Tar Heels still coming. Russo sneaks through, but her shot went right to Diedrich. Neither goalkeeper credited with a save in the first half. Diedrich makes one here. And look at the gap in this defense. Created Cox. Three defenders go to her. There's a gap in the seam. Russo finds it. Well done by Cox to find her there. But that's a finish that really takes the win out of Washington State. If Russo can put that away, that's one you want to get in. Because that's a hole you're going to have to dig out of. That is a tough mountain to climb if you're Washington State. Bennett stumbling got a little bit of a foot to the ball to keep it alive Bennett described as a bull in a china shop the way she likes to play go hard at people by her head coach said you can tell she's an NFL dad's daughter she plays with no fear her dad, Edgar, played for the Packers and the Bears. Played collegiately at Florida State. He's also coach in the NFL. Cox turns, has nobody there to help her. Didn't need him right away. She's going to take this one herself. Cox breaks through. A last-ditch touch by Brianna Alger. Broke it up just enough. Good glimpse at the pace of Cox. Alger coming in last second. What a great tackle that is. All the way from that left back position, sliding over. Alger, a junior. First year on that back line as a defender moved back there. Named the All-Pac-12 third team. And still manages to find her way into the attack, either on set pieces or getting forward. She's the third player in school history with double-digit assists in a season. She has 10. As our referee, Samantha Martinez, will get things situated. Through Mucherera, a quick Substitution for the Tar Heels off the bench in the second half. At the assist on that goal to put North Carolina in the lead in the 38th minute. Meanwhile, here come the Cardinal, the top overall seed in this tournament. Stanford having not lost in 17 straight matches, making their way to Avaya Stadium, getting set for that All-Pac-12 semifinal coming up later tonight against UCLA. Those two teams met in the regular season, just a 1-0 win for Stanford in that meeting. So we know we'll have one Pac-12 team in the final. Will we have two? The Washington State Cougars have shocked the world on their run to this College Cup. They're going to have to take down another number one seed and come from behind if they want to make it to Sunday's championship. Russo. Sheen Pinto working some combinations. Here's Morgan Goff. Crowd wanting a handball, now they'll get it. Crowd mostly in Washington State colors, I should say, clamoring for that call. I could hear Weaver all the way up here saying that she wanted that ball down the line. Earlier on in the game, they had her in that nine position playing centrally against Ruben Moy. 
She's floated out to that left side and it just hasn't been as effective, it seems, getting the ball. Not sure why they made that switch. Yeah, because, because that was the matchup they really wanted. Yeah. And it seemed like she was always on the ball when they were in the attack in that first half, Morgan Weaver. And those front three do switch quite a bit, but I would make it an emphasis to put Weaver in that central position because she is causing chaos all the time. Cox trying to do that on the other end for North Carolina. Kept her composure, got the cross. Diedrich punched it out. And Mucherera committed a foul. And you don't want to be running with your back to Rue Mucherera <laughs> as a defender coming, but what a great save by Diedrich on that one. Yeah, I think you can blame her on that one. She yeah. kind of was falling down, going the other direction. Though she does, in the always colorful words of Anton Dorrance, play with the gift of fury, <laughs> Rue Mucherera. Diedrich, who started the first five games a year ago for Washington State, then tore her ACL. All that part of this journey for the Cougars, three ACL tears last season. Russo with the turn, slips on the delivery. What, what do you do, Julie, other than maybe changing your, your shoes? You just try to make sure you keep your footing on a field like this. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta change your cleats to studs for sure, but it's soft. It's not, you know, and they've been getting a ton of rain up here. I was talking to Brandi Chastain earlier, actually, in the day, and she had been on the field and said, it, it's going to be slippery. She already knew it. She said, it's going to be hard. It's slick. Hard to play on, not hard surface. She said, it's super soft. I haven't had the precipitation, but perhaps a little bit of that evening dew also contributing to the slick nature of this field. A close and personal look at our Blades of Grass here at Avaya Stadium. Too many of these players on the field, I think, would tell you they've had that up close and personal look so far in this match. Kamara Stevens, another one of those key attacking players for Washington State, who I believe that is the first time we've called her name in the second half. Yeah, Otto, Pinto, Goff, those three. I mean, she's playing numbers down in that middle there when they're playing five in the midfield. Having a hard time getting the ball, Gamera Stevens. I think a lot of that is the credit to those players you mentioned, and also North Carolina keeping the ball, keeping possession, forcing Washington State to defend. But as this scoreline stands, Washington State still thinks they're in this. They've got confidence. They've got a life. It's why that third goal for North Carolina could really be the dagger. Lada Wubin Moy, five assists off of set pieces this season, four of those coming from free kicks. Her delivery hanging in the air. Macy Bell, the intended target. Goff, who got the start in this match in place of the injured Emily Fox. Chance now on the counter for Washington State. They'll try to go forward to Bennett. The closing speed of Dorsey, stride for stride with Bennett, slows her down. Dorrance likes to call Julia Dorsey a heat-seeking missile. She just will find her way to the ball, find her way to where she needs to be defensively. Mucherera beat on that move. Ball across the header from Collins in traffic. Couldn't get through. Russo saw some space up ahead. 
Vaness. Alger wanting to find number six. Whoop and Moy and Bell actually collide with one another on that play. And still, North Carolina attacks. Look, Anson Dorrance may have said there was no brilliant game plan that they had in terms of how they came back from a goal down to take the lead, but this seems like a very different game in terms of the way that North Carolina is looking much more comfortable. He said he knew they'd be uncomfortable with what Washington State does, but the Cougars not looking like the team that's been so dangerous. No, and I think so much of the offensive prowess of the Cougars comes from that energy and that hunting. And right now it's been hard for them to win balls consistently because that is really the trademark of North Carolina as well. When you have two teams that play that similar system. Lamara Stevens trying to get Weaver in behind that back line of North Carolina. You can see Weaver a bit frustrated, trying to get something going. And the thing about Washington State, and Coach Schulenberger will tell you this, you know, they know, he says, listen, the Pac-12 is like a country club. We're not one of them, <laughs> right? We don't play like that. We're different. We're gritty. We're blue collar. I mean, he knows he's not going to play a pretty UCLA, Stanford type of possession game to get out of this. They're going to have to rely on this grit. The issue is you're going against the team that has 22 national titles of grit alongside it. So it's a, it's a hard battle and a matchup for them. And then on top of that, they sub in a line of players like this with fresh legs. That five player change coming on for North Carolina. And this is really one of those key moments. You heard Washington State head coach Todd Schulenberger talk about the fact that his team went toe to toe with the starters for North Carolina. But when this change happened, that's when they did not keep up as well. You are allowed a re-entry in the second half in college soccer. That's Zoe Rade getting the ball across. The shot from Madison Schultz. Strickland, who had the goal to put the Tar Heels in the lead. And this game-changing unit off the bench causing trouble. And I can guarantee you, Schulenberger, at halftime, you heard him with us right before halftime saying, listen, we didn't bring it when the game changers came in. When they subbed in that group, we didn't have the same intensity. And I'm sure he had a word with his team about this second half of the second half when they come in. If you think about it, this team, Washington State, plays with a chip. But right now, the reserves are winning against the starters of Washington State. You can imagine a coach using that to fire up his team a little bit, too. Weaver, her settling touch back in the middle toward Collins. Avery Collins in the box. Her shot will not be on target. So much pace with those front three up top. Weaver getting back in the game. And she sees Avery Collins making that cut in between. A good run. That first touch gets away from her a little bit. So it's a much more difficult ball to play coming across. All the right intentions just can't deliver it technically. That was the first shot of the second half for Washington State. Saw Bridget Andrzejewski back there defending. She spent a lot of time, whether it's truly a four back or she's just come back a lot. Had a lot of defensive responsibilities against this Cougar team. Ball into the box. Washington State trying to find that equalizer. Plenty of time here for Makai and Vaness. And those are the exact situations where it gets a little sloppy, but Washington State and it's attacking third. The ball's bouncing around. You got to win that second, third, fourth ball. Put it back in there. Because those are some situations where you can steal one back to get in this game. 
foul right at midfield as Ali Gambone is taken down by Hannah Goff. Quick restart for North Carolina toward the back post. The shot from Hallie Clanky. Advantage. Turnover though. Gamera Stevens. This ball will make its way to Weaver. Second all time in Washington State history and scoring had her shot blocked. Schultz slowing things down, allowing Dorsey to get into the mix. Now it's turned over to the Cougars. Kamara Stevens. Two goals and an assist in this NCAA tournament for Washington State. She has been a key cog in their attack. McGlenn stood her ground, serves it in. Collins! Macy Bell beat her to the ball. Another shot. It got through to Dickey, but she made the save. That is great defending by Macy Bell because Avery Collins so good on set pieces and in the air. That is her strength. She is fighting to get on that near post to that one and Macy Bell's not gonna let her get there. The timing and not just getting that ball, Julie, but the force with which she cleared it out of there. So often you see just sort of a half-hearted clearance and it still gives your opponent another chance. And Avery Collins, with her size, all she needs is a little window to get in there. And Macy Bell doesn't give her that body position. Weaver trying to beat two defenders. Chance for Molly Myers, who just came off the bench for Washington State. Overshot it just a bit of Elise Bennett. Coog still with an opportunity, though. Outside the box is Gamera Stevens. Spins her way free, takes the shot with her left foot, and Dickey is there at the near post. Gamera Stevens showing what she can do on the top of the box. Faints one way, pulls it back, creates a window, hits it well. Great save again by Claudia Dickey. Clean on everything. Hasn't had anything bobbling up off of her. And in this, with this field and this mist, that's pretty remarkable. But you can see the momentum switching. Washington State getting a little confidence. Gomera Stevens getting the ball more. Morgan Weaver coming alive, Avery Collins coming alive. Some changes with the substitutions in that attacking unit for Washington State. Mackenzie Frimpong, Ellerton, number 32, Molly Myers, 14. Two of those in the attack. Placing Bennett and Collins. Talked a lot about Mackenzie from Pong Allertson and her former U.S. national team mom, Tina from Pong. Just over 20 minutes remaining in this first semifinal, making their way now to Avaya Stadium. The two seed, the UCLA Bruins, who told us yesterday they are sick of almost, of almost getting the win, almost getting the job done. They had a national championship, and Amanda Cromwell's first year as head coach back in 2013, made it to the final in 2017, lost to Stanford, 
relishing the opportunity for a rematch against the Cardinal in this semifinal matchup at 9.30 Eastern. Gamera Stevens out of Hawaii. And I just want to know, Julie, if she manages to get a goal, are you going to say her full name? And by the way, her first name has 25 letters in it, just her first name. I feel like you have a better handle on that, Jim. <laughs> I'll do it. She scores. Lewis Joel, by the way, number 27 in for North Carolina, had the ball for a moment. This is Myers coming the other direction for Washington State. Andrew Jeske slides and clears it out. Washington State told us part of that energy, that edge, that grit comes from their bench. They are loud. They're making noise the whole game. And this Washington State bench and their unit of fans behind them trying to will this team to find a way to tie this match up. Just one loss on the season for North Carolina. That came against the Arkansas Razorbacks in September. A team that interestingly the North Carolina Tar Heels told us yesterday reminded them a lot of this Washington State team in terms of how they go after you. That tackle from behind by Strickland will be enough to halt things. Give a free kick to Washington State. And this in an area that could be interesting. Again, Washington State loves set pieces. It plays into their grittiness. Hernandez Repriza with the ball forward. A chance. Mendes, who was the hero in the quarterfinals against South Carolina, got her foot to it, but Dickey in the right place. There's just something about this team, though, where you feel like with Washington State, and here's the Mendes, very similar, actually, to her positioning. She sneaks in there, doesn't she? In, against South Carolina, she does, and she's left all alone on that backside and hits it well. Dickey's been so clean tonight. But there's something about this Washington State team in that they just keep going. There is this, we're going to prove you wrong mentality. I mean, there's so much to say for how much that can give you in terms of energy and confidence, especially as you get into the final waning minutes. Starters to that first unit back in for North Carolina and Mass. Not quite the starting 11 back on the field for North Carolina. Rumi Torreira is still out there. Other than that, it is the players who started the match for the Tar Heels. Torreira. On the far side, Cox is up top. Here is Russo as well, ready to throw in. North Carolina will have to try that throw again. Get too far with it, but they'll get another chance after it was cleared out. Our referee, Samantha Martinez, blew the whistle, but now gets things going again for Andrew Jeske. Lucharera was lurking on the back side of that play. Couldn't quite get there from Pong Ellertson. Ball forward for Weaver. Morgan Weaver in the box and at the last moment, guess who? Macy Bell with a big save. Weaver was through on this as well. Gets by Wuben Moy. Great first touch to beat her. And look at Macy Bell with the recovery run. Ooh, that could
could be a tie-saving tackle. First corner kick of the second half for Washington State. They had four in the first half. Put a few of them too close to Dickey, though, who came out to grab them. Vanessa will track it down for the Cougars. Ruggerera won it for North Carolina. Not for long, though. Both teams having difficulty just keeping the ball here. It is now Frimpong Ellertson up toward that front line. Touchdown by Weaver. Diedrich did not want to come out for that ball where it was. Wanted her defense to clear it. Really an awkward exchange there in the back for Washington State. Russo across. It's touched up and away by Diedrich. Talk about Pulling the trigger quickly, Russo forcing Diedrich to put a hand in front of that one. Anson Doran says Russo has one of the best shots he's ever seen, and he's had a lot of players, as we've talked about all game, come through his program. But what a save by Diedrich, keeping her team in it. And when they're in it, this Washington State team has the swagger to come back and tie this up. Second corner for the Tar Heels. Diedrich couldn't get there. Pinto still chasing. Gamera Stevens gets it only as far as Wubin Moy. Pinto. Goff will have some time for North Carolina. She won't take it. She's ready to go right back toward those front runners. Offside. Flag is up. The women's Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona coming your way Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Notre Dame taking on fourth-ranked UConn at Gamble Pavilion in stores. Weaver, one touch, cleared out, corner kick coming. Cougars making some changes of their own now. Four subs who are really starters coming back into the match for Wazoo. You got Bennett and Avery Collins both coming back in who are great on set pieces here. Maness, number 23, coming forward as well. Macy Bell looking like she's Fighting a knock. She's had some big moments in this match for North Carolina. And needs a moment needs to gather herself here. We saw Brianna Alger taking the corner kicks for the most part for Washington State in the first half. Off, took the last one. She's ready to take this one as Bell, who keep in mind also is one of the best in the air offensively or defensively for North Carolina. And she is going to have to come off. The trainers come out to talk to her. So at least for this corner kick, perhaps longer, North Carolina without one of its top players. off who served up the corner kick to Maness in the 96th minute of that quarterfinal win over South Carolina. Maggie Pierce replacing Macy Bell for North Carolina. And the Cougars take advantage of her absence. Here is Alger. Mm. 
Really a wasted opportunity. Flight that ball in there with some pace. That second ball in there, put it in with pace. I mean, when you're chipping balls in, and especially as we've seen Dickey handling those, offensively, it's not helping you. Collins lost it to Mucherera. This ball could bounce for Cox. Not quite, though. It'll allow Diedrich to come out. Tonight, after Lakers Trailblazers, it's Sports Center from Los Angeles with Linda and Stan. Well, we have some College Cup highlights on there. Weaver walks one. Had one in the first half. A little wide there. Weaver again still so dangerous. No one can stay with her pace. Either side, left footed, right footed. Just cuts it a little too much. But with 11 and a half minutes to play, and you're North Carolina, Macy Bell back in there. Playing with her eye. They gave her some drops on the sideline. You want Morgan Weaver on this ball. And look at that ball, Julie. I think if she puts that inside that far post, she had Dickie beat. Instead, it was a little wide, but now another free kick coming for Wazoo. Ball in the air. Headed toward the goal by Bennett, and Dickey races to get there. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup final on Sunday, December 8th. That's 8.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Will it be North Carolina or will this dream season for Washington State continue? They need a goal to keep that hope alive. Weaver, most goals in a season in 26 years at Washington State. Added to that tally in the first half, but that's been all the scoring so far for the Cougars. They have been pressing here. Testing the composure of the ACC champs to see if they can hang on to this one goal lead. I think back to that Russo one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. I mean, this game would be very different if she slides that in. UNC's up three to one. And instead, you're battling and grinding. I mean, the importance of that third goal. Lucherera assisted on the goal to put the Tar Heels in the lead. That ball wound its way to Diedrich's gloves. Weaver back onto it for Wazoo. Weaver trying to work her magic in the attack. She'll settle for the corner, no problem. Seventh of the game coming up for Washington State. It's like the reins have been handed to Hannah Goff to continue to take these corners. Dickey's hunting for it. She doesn't get there. It bounces off the head of the Cougars, but out of bounds. And now we have a very special podcast to tell you about. One that my friend Julie found. Oh, well. there we go. Laughter permitted. Honestly, and I say this not because you're right next to me, one of the most fun, entertaining podcasts I think Aww. you can find. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Yeah, plenty of great guests that you have on with people like Doris Burke. Doris was King. awesome. Yes, Robin Roberts. We've had some great ones this season. More to come. I could use a donut right now as well. <laughs>
for it's dinner. Always, always a part of the conversation. You can find that Laugh to Permitted podcast on the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are available. Pinto looking forward for Ali Gambon. Touched out by Goff. Seconds ticking away on the Cougars' hopes. North Carolina in their season of redemption. Trying to get that shot again at the national championship. They lost it to an ACC foe in Florida State last year. Alger took her time at first, then delivered the ball up the middle. Wilden toward Bennett. Collins. You have to think these Washington State players, I know they got a little bit of a breather, some of them in that attack, but having to dig deep here. Collins, who won a national championship with Stanford two years ago. Trying to get this Washington State team an opportunity to win their very first, in their first visit to the College Cup. You have to think Washington State's been able to pull so many special moments out of their back pocket. Do they have another one they can pull here? Something tells me this game's not done, Jen. I don't think anybody is feeling comfortable on that field. Weaver maybe trying to work the bounce, but she's offside. She's played that line pretty well tonight. Has gotten caught a couple of times offside. You can see the looks on the bench for Washington State. Plenty of confidence in this team, but hoping they can find something in this attack. Rican. Kamara Stevens with her left foot on the ground. Ruben Moy got it up the field for North Carolina. Russo. It's goal in the 24th minute tied this game for North Carolina. Her goal right now, take time off the clock. She couldn't keep it for long. Turnover. Pinto will go right back to that corner for North Carolina. Brianna Pinto, who told us yesterday, we asked if there was a little bit of chip on their shoulders in terms of being the only ACC team amongst three Pac-12 teams. She said, oh yeah, this is ACC Pac-12. We want to bring that title back home to the ACC. These two conferences have just been phenomenal. Both sending nine teams to the NCAA tournament this year. Yeah, and if USC had beat UNC in that quarterfinal, it would have been an all pack 12 College Cup for the first time. And how about that? Half of the quarterfinal field made up by the Pac-12 and three of them for the first time ever making it to the College Cup. There's only been one other conference that's had that before. Guess, guess who that was? Uh, ACC. Yeah, that's correct. They did it twice. Just over three minutes remaining. As Gambone makes her way off. There is Joel 
transfer from West Virginia in her first year with the Tar Heels in for Gambon. You know the Tar Heels will take every opportunity to take their time as well they should trying to hold on to this lead. Neither team's been able to find a goal in the second half. All three goals coming before the break. A takeaway by Alger. Pinto managed to get it back for North Carolina. Cox will get to this in the box. Maness is going to get called for the foul. That'll set up what is essentially a short corner for North Carolina. Slightly shortened. Mm. We'll stay with the Tar Heels. 25 times North Carolina has advanced to the championship game. They have 22 national championships, 21. NCAA championships, one of those titles actually coming before the NCAA awarded championships in women's soccer. And I'm sure Anson Dorrance will say this is not the prettiest game they've ever played, but they must take a lot of confidence in the fact in both quarterfinal and now semifinal, they were a goal down and they came back and they fought and they grinded it out. And if you're Washington State, you walk away with your head high, given what you've done in this postseason tournament, how they fought here today. And really, beyond anyone's expectations, have been the surprise team with this run this postseason. No question. Historic season for Washington State. 16 wins, the most in program history. Their first ever College Cup. The first team ever to win three games on the road in the NCAA tournament. They're an unseeded team. They took down a number one. They took down a number two on the road to get here. And they have given this Tar Heel team one heck of a fight. Just seconds now. Remaining on the clock at Avaya Stadium. who got the game winner, Mucherera to Strickland. Those two connecting with that game winning goal to put North Carolina into that national championship game. They await the winner of the all Pac-12 battle coming up next between the number one overall seed Stanford Cardinal 
and the second seeded UCLA Bruins. What a great one that should be. So North Carolina is through. Now they'll wait to see who they face. We thank you so much for watching our first semifinal here from Avaya Stadium in San Jose. North Carolina victorious 2-1 over Washington State. Coming up next, it's College Football Live, followed by our second semifinal.